Hi, Ben Atkinson here, author and director of HolyClubs.com, where ordinary people are called to do extraordinary things. That's who I am. I'm just an ordinary person, and by God's grace and mercy, I can do the extraordinary things she's called me to do. This is Firm Foundation number 20. We're on Who is the Father? And this is something that, you know, I really want you to, to go deep in and understand and look to. You know, you're doing this for, for one or two reasons. Maybe you're just you're going through your quiet time. Again, I want to encourage you, just keep going. Press on. Look at these Bible verses. You know, you've got the Firm Foundations manual, or you've got the PDF with the Bible links right in there, or maybe you're, you have this printed out. I want to encourage you, go deep. Look at the Bible verses. Go after it. Or maybe you're a part of a group, and your facilitator said, hey, it's your job today to go through who is the Father, number 20. And I want to encourage you, maybe the Lord has set this as a divine moment. Maybe you uh, remember pre-foundation number one. I want to encourage you to go back and look at that. Maybe the Lord has more for you, and the Father desires a family, pre-foundation number one. We've got the pre-foundations number one through nine to help lay the groundwork. And hopefully at this point you know that came out of a dream where the Lord literally came to me and said, before you do the firm foundations, 1 through 24, I want you to do these nine pre-foundations. So really on his heart, he wants us to know, number one, the Father desires a family. And so uh, I want to encourage you, if you're a teacher, go after this. Go deep in this. We're going to learn this. You've got 20 minutes to preach this to your peers. Before we get into this scripture, let's pray. Abba, we come before you. We're so thankful for such a time as this. We're so thankful for who you are and what you've called us to. We ask that you would be revealed as our Father. We would know that we're children of the living God. and We would walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, so let's look at this, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. And you might remember this from different things, like a Christmas card or something like that. And, and it's, uh, I want to read this. It says, His name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Remember from, from Foundation number 19, we went through the name of God. and We talked about Exodus 34. We talked about Moses hiding in the cleft of the rock. The reflection of God go, as he's hidden there. You know, God passes by and he sees that reflection. And he kind of gives a title of each of the attributes of who God is. You know, that big, move, vast movie screen of the greatness of God. And he's like, I'll call this one the Lord, the Lord God. I mean, the, the Lord is giving the title. Uh, but uh, he has seen much more. The essence is each word is the title of a vast story of who God is that we're going to unfold forever, that you are going to search out forever. And that reveals who God is. And that invites you into becoming like him. That's your walk of holiness. Also, this phrase, again, his name is wonderful. It's counselor. It's mighty God. These are all describing parts about him. We just want to unpack one part. First, I want you to look here is the word ever and lasting. And a lot of times, we want to stop right now. Some of you, if I say father, you may be that may conjure up feelings that are either really bad or really good. I'm fortunate enough to have a godly, amazing father who did the best he could. He, he pastored me. He provided for me. He uh, nurtured me. He cared and made a way. He protected me the best he could. In fact, my father w was so amazing, he would go off. His job was to go and protect others, protect the helpless. And um, even at almost 70 years of age at this point in his life, he's actually trying to protect, protect youth right now. It's just amazing. But maybe you didn't have that. Maybe that's not your story. Maybe your story is something where you hear the word father and you've been harmed by your father. You've been destroyed by what he said, what he's done, or what he hasn't said and hasn't done. I remember I was in a park when we lived in uh, uh, inner city and um, I was at the park trying to pray, trying to have my quiet time, and these youth who were maybe seven years old at the most, they should have been there with parents. No, I watched them cross a busy street by themselves, cars honking. They come to the park alone, it was like five or six of them, 
and the two boys get in a fight, um, and the fight was over um, who their identity of their fathers were, and because neither one of them really knew their father, and and the one shouted, "Well, at least your dad has paid you child su ch child support. My dad has never paid child support. He doesn't care about me." I mean, that just hit me in the chest like a ton of bricks. And I said, oh my God, this young man doesn't know that he has a father who loves him. His only identity with the word father is someone who doesn't care. Some of you right now where you are, the Lord is gonna break in and he's gonna show you, you do have a father. He's in heaven and he's gonna provide for you. He's gonna transform things. and. I want to encourage you in the group, some of you, maybe you're, there's tears going right now. Maybe just, if you're, you know, stop this and pray for each other, do something. But listen, you got to tell people, the Father has a plan for you. That's why pre-foundation number one is, your everlasting Father wants to be with you forever. He desires a family. In fact, I'm going to pray right now. Father, we ask for those who didn't have fathers. I ask in Jesus' name that you would bring adopting healing our father break in with might our father break in with power our father break in with divine revelation healing in jesus name i just speak over you through the blood of the of jesus through the cross you're healed in jesus name okay right now we're going to get into some truths that you're really really going to have to know and i want you to know these i want you to go after these First is, let's look at, um, we each run our own race of holiness. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 12. It says, therefore laying aside, or therefore we also, since we are surrounded, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that's set before us. Looking unto Jesus, who's the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy of sat before him, he endured the cross, despising its shame, sat down at the right hand of the Father. And so we're going to go through a lot of this, but first of all, one thing is, is we overcome by looking at Jesus. You know, we want to, we want our eyes to be completely focused, the eye of our heart completely focused. We want our, the eyes, our practical eyes and our inward eyes, our outward eyes and our inward eyes to be focused on Jesus, to be focused on who he is. And Jesus is always describing and, and portraying who the Father is. He's kind of like the living example on earth. He is the living example of truth. He is describing the Father. He perfectly is describing. So every act he does, everything he says, the way he thinks and feels, is perfectly describing the Father. So as we're looking at Jesus, we're seeing the Father. And we're seeing who we are going to become, and we're walking as sons and daughters of the living God. So number one, but we but it's also it's it's we understand that it's a race set before us. It's our own. And I want to encourage you about this phrase, our own. It's that a lot of times bad things can happen to people or very good things can happen to people you look at some people's lives and you go man your life turned out really great or your life turned out really bad number one i want you to look at what is success to me success is i i am loved by god and i love god therefore i'm successful and i'm walking out my first commandment calling to love him with my heart soul mind and strength and i love my neighbor as myself I'm walking out the commandments of God. To me, that's successful. And Matthew chapter 24, verse 25, and 20, chapter 24 and chapter 25, I want to be found a faithful witness. We're going to get into chapter 25 today. But each one of us has a different story. We're all unique. We all have a different thing in uh, life. And so I want to encourage you. Uh, number one is to listen to people, to hear their story, because their story is similar to yours in some ways, but it's their own story. And when you're listening to someone's story, don't always dwell on the negative. Turn them to what is the Lord doing in your story. 
every single person the Lord, the enemy has tried to destroy their life, keep, hurt them with lies, just keep them from the church, separate them in a place of woundedness. However, our Father in heaven is there as we turn to him. But this is our own uh, walk, and you've got to help people. And we do this by turning them to the Lord and helping them get up and run their own race. We don't run the race for them. I don't run around and pay everyone's bills. I go and find a solution of why they got in the place that they are. No, I mean, I practically help people if I have to and can if, it's, if that's what the Lord is calling us. But we want to be those that help draw them to the solution of Jesus and our Father in the midst of everything. And he may say pay their bills. So there you go. May, <laughs> okay. From the beginning, God is a father's heart. Jesus revealed the nature of God as a father who longs for intimacy with his family. And remember, from foundation number one, the father desires a family. Today, here, right now, as you're going through this, the father's heart yearns to have a family who voluntarily loves him and his son. God is a great king, but above all, he is your eternal father. And so we're running our own race, and within this we'll talk a little bit about what does it mean to be a child of our Father. So we're going to get into that momentarily. Okay. Okay, look at, let's look at this a little bit more. Let's go a little bit deeper on the Father is holy and good. So this first part here, he is holy. God's a creator. He's, he is the creator, and we are the creation. He's majestic. He is holy. Sin cannot dwell before him. We've said this a lot of times. But he made a way for you to be with him. He made a way for you to live holy through Jesus. And, and we see this in Luke 15, verse 11 through 32, which, which I, I, I want to uh, just kind of look at real quickly. If you're not, we're going to go through this at the end. A little bit more, but I, I want you to just turn there if you have your Bibles, and let's jump into Luke 15 because there's a lot said about Luke 15. There's a lot of songs about it, but let's look at some things that I think are really important. First of all, Jesus is telling this story, and it's important for you to know that Jesus is telling a story to bring about truth. and And as as teachers, I, I hopefully you've gone through the segment where it says how to become a Holy Club's teacher. And what it is, is I, at the end I say, tell a story from your own experience or create a parable type story that helps you grow in articulating the truths. In fact, when we're training our children, uh, my wife and I, as we're training our children in writing, part of their, it, it, what they have to do is they have to take a story that is common, that they may know, and like Peter Rabbit or something like that, that has values in it, and then they have to tell a totally different story but keep the same values. So it helps them learn to tell parables. And I want to encourage you, just begin to practice that. If you do this, you will actually learn how to come in to hear stories from people and speak truths into their situation. It's actually a very powerful tool to portray the goodness of the Lord. It's also a powerful way to release the word of wisdom. And Jesus is really good at telling stories to release wisdom. The wisdom would either come in and spring truth to life or it would cut the lies away. The word of wisdom is very powerful. But we look at Luke chapter 15. A certain man, verse 11, had two sons. A younger comes to him and says, Father, give me a portion of the goods that falls on me. So he divided them in his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions on prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine. I want you to remember that part. There arises a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. I mean, he literally put in there, he had to become a slave. And in essence, he sent, and he sent, and he sent him into his fields to feed his swine or pigs. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Some of you may be in that position where you're like, how did I end up here? I don't even know how I got here. And you might be doing things, thinking things, or part of things that are just horrible, but the Lord can redeem you. 
And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and he will say to him, And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. So first heaven and then before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So I want to stop right here and jump into this story a little bit. So number one, let's just recap it. And So we've got two brothers, and one's faithfully serving. The other just takes off half of his inheritance and runs away and lives a horrible lifestyle. That time, uh, the stories would have come back to uh, the father through the merchants or through traveling relatives or traveling friends that had gone off and they would have heard the stories of the son and inevitably they would have been really embellished so in, instead of having one party it would have been 15 parties or what have you but I, I'm, I'm sure it was really hard for the father by the time the news got back we don't hear, hear about the mother the poor gal but the, by the time the father heard it probably was like oh, it just grieved his heart now what would you do as a father or mother I mean, we, moms, I know what you would do. You would run off right away and you would try and fix things. You would get something. I mean, that's what moms do. They're awesome. Um, maybe that's why the mom's not in this one. <laughs> Jesus said, I got to leave a mom out of it. So he knew he had a, a faithful mom that got in, in into a lot of things. In fact, miracles and weddings. And <laughs> so he knew how, how exciting moms are to get a solution right away. But we, he focuses on the father in this. And fathers... I mean, as a father, I'll speak to the fathers. Would you have run off and tried to grab your son? I know I would have. I, I mean, I would have done whatever to go get my son. I mean, it was a rebellious son, but I would have ran back to him. Son, what are you doing? I, I've, I've got two sons that I absolutely love. I would chase them down and just be. However, this father, and Jesus is telling a story about his father in heaven, stayed right where he was. Now, you might think, oh, how harsh is that? I mean, however, though, how many times is our Heavenly Father in situations just stayed in one spot when you thought He should come and rescue you? Maybe you're in rebellion. I'm talking about those that are in rebellion. I'm not talking about those where harm is. Pray right now if you're in harm. Pray in Jesus' name that you would be set free. In fact, if you're in harm, go tell someone. Go tell your youth leader. Go tell your pastor. Get help right away. I'm talking about the rebellious. And so this son was rebellious. And his father didn't come and rescue him. So what happens after that? Next, he runs out of money. After he runs out of money, what happens? A severe famine comes on the land. Now who gives, who brings famines about? God is the one who brings famines. And I would dare to say the holy and good father is the one who brings famines on the land. And so what happens is, what you've got to see and understand is the overwhelming, unrelenting, all-consuming love of the Father who desires a family. Right now, the Father is saying, this person, I care more about their heart than their, about what they're about to do. He's setting the perfect scenario. Now you might say, well, well why doesn't God give him another chance? The father, the good father, taught him the word of God his whole life. But then when he got to an age where he could run around, whatever reason, bitterness or what have you, or pride, he got up, took his money, and went away. So he'd been taught the word of God his whole life, inevitably. And then he was away. And the Lord is a good father. He will spend a person's lifetime chasing them down with unrelenting love. He's holy. He's good. He's holy. Sin can't dwell with them. He's good in that he will pr provide the least amount of pressure for the greatest amount of turnaround in your life. I hope you heard that. And so for this young man, he wasn't listening to this father who taught him. Then he took his money and ran. He ran out of that. He, inevitably, people were pleading with him. Inevitably, someone came and said, you can't keep living this way. His conscience would have been speaking to him. However, he cast that aside, kept living as a prodigal. And then the kindness of the Lord 
breaks in and goes, remember, he chastens his children. He's a good father that chastens the children while he judges the unrighteous. And here he was, he's chastening, he's correcting, he's disciplining this, this, this youngster. And as a result, the youngster's not listening, so he sends the famine. It puts more pressure. He didn't respond to the first bit of pressure. Now he's bringing more and more pressure. Does this make sense? Maybe in your life, you've not responded, you're in rebellion, and the Lord brings more and more pressure. For me, that's what happened. That's why my knee got knocked out. I, you know, boom, my knee was straight. I got it broken. I had to snap it back in. It was the chastening of the Lord. For hopefully you've heard that story. If you hadn't, the Lord chased me down. I wouldn't repent. I wouldn't turn. He chastened me. He disciplined me, knocked my knee out, put it back in, and then I put it back in. And then the Lord said, Hebrews chapter 12, Verse 12 in Isaiah 35, they're the same thing. Strengthen the hands which hang down, the knees which are dislocated, so you can walk a, a walk of holiness. And inevitably, he was saying the same thing to this prodigal young man. And this prodigal young man ended up getting to the place where he came to his senses. And sometimes, you know, the, you have to get to the place where you're saying, I give up my pride, I give up my selfishness, I give up my rebellion, I give up my sin. And it says that he repented before who? Before God, before heaven, and then his father. So first of all, you've got to firstly get right with God. Parents of wayward children, I always tell this to the parents when they're like, my kids are gone, it's all, I gotta do this, and da 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 and they're getting, and, and I just go, Okay, this is, this is doable. I said, God chased you down. He chased Adam and Eve down. He loves them. When people make mistakes, he'll do the perfect scenario. Every time Israel made a mistake, he would create the perfect scenario. Luke 15, he created the perfect scenario of pressure. And I just said, keep praying for them. Keep loving them. Keep pursuing them. But let the Lord, who's holy and good, do what he needs to do in their life and don't be quick to rescue them because they didn't listen to you before let the Lord a good father who desires a family forever chasten them you know I say that because it's true <laughs> it's biblical also and so as a result you know be careful when you're jumping in to help your kids see if you're rescuing them from God you can't rescue your kids from God uh, let him a good father chasten them really good um, and so the Lord turned me over you know I was turned over to the father and a good father came and chasing me by popping my leg out I didn't listen before but popping my leg out got me to pay attention I, ho I hope you understand that and then as the young man came to his senses and there's parents this is where you're praying you're praying our prayers go up to the good father the good father who wants these kids comes down and touches their heart and at the same time, then what happens? They come to awareness. I've sinned against heaven and against earth. You first want reconciliation with the holy and the good Father. Okay, let's pick up our story. <clears throat> and he says, I'm no longer to be worthy to be called your son. Um, make me like one of your hired servants. Verse 20, he arose and he comes, came to his father. So inevitably, I know he might have to run away at night. I, I don't know how it all worked away, it worked out. But he comes to his father, and he, when he's still a great way off, the father, you know, inevitably, I don't know, was he sitting on the porch? Where was he? Could he see? He saw off in the distance. He was looking. Maybe he was watching. Maybe he had news that his son was coming home. I'm sure he had news that, hey, your son lost all the money. And, you, you know, I'm sure people came to him and said, you never should have trusted him, da 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 and, and, and that pain of welling up inside of him. However, he's trusting God. Parents, you got to just trust the Lord. Uh, pastors, trust the Lord as, as with the wayward sheep. And then when he, the father sees him come, he realizes there's a moment of repentance. Because if that son came home, there was repentance before heaven and earth. The father runs off, sees him, has compassion on him, grabs him, kiss, and kisses him. And the son said to the father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to become your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring the best robe, put it on him. Bring a ring and put it on his hand. Bring sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. And I just want to, you know, what, what happens here is 
the Father brings love, shows love to the repentant heart. And, and this, is, this is important, real quick. Um, love to the repentant heart. Now, did the Father... Did the father in the story love the son when he was wayward? Absolutely. He absolutely loved him. Did he love the son when he was repentant? Absolutely. For God so loved the world. However, when he was repentant, he displayed that love. And so in your life right now, you might say, oh, I don't know if the Lord really loves me. If you're in a season of rebellion, you might not feel the Lord. But what you see is you've got to understand the chastening or the discipline of the Lord is actually his love towards you. That's number one if you're in rebellion. This is Hebrews 12. And then number two, within this chastening, we also have, um, first of all, if, 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 again, he loved, the Father loved him even when he was in sin, but he displayed it. So he displays or he shows that affection after the repentant heart says yes. I hope that makes sense to you. That's very, very important for us. So a lot of what I want to say to you is if you are in rebellion, repent before the Lord. Embrace the chastening of the good Father. Turn back to him and he is going to lavish this thing's these, his love on you. And, and let's just look at these real quickly. Um, it says here, well, let's look at the rewards. And so first reward we see here is com uh, compassion. God wants to release that compassion. He wants, as you're repentant, he, he expands. He gives you that affection. Now again, he's chasing. When you're rebellious, he's chastening you. When you're repentant, you you feel that compassion. There's a kiss. That kiss is more intimacy. It's a deeper intimacy. So he's continuing to show him affections as you as you return to the Lord. He'll, he'll and say yes. You're humble and meek before the Lord. He'll get more and more of that inside of him. He repents and then he says this. He says, the father says to his servant, give me a robe. So in essence, right away, we're covered. He's covered. The father in heaven wants to cover you. First of all, he wants to cover you with that garment of righteousness. When you say yes to the Lord, you're covered in a garment of righteousness. And then also, he wants to give you the priestly robes of your call. He wants to adorn you in the beauty that you have. But also giving that robe is a sign of his inheritance. It's a sign of his authority. It's a sign of saying, you're a part of the family. You get to do business with the family next. I mean, this is just lavish. This is his grace. I mean, this is mercy and grace. The guy's like, I need to take a time out. I need to, you know, you don't put me anywhere. And the Lord, he, the father's like, I love you. Jump right back in. I love you. You're repentant. And that's mercy. He washes us clean. He doesn't give us what we deserve. Grace is he does give us what we don't deserve. And, that, and he doesn't deserve any of this. But the Lord's like, I love you. He's a good father. He really is holy, but he's also very good. Okay. And give me the robe and put a ring on his finger. That ring would have symbolized us the ability to do family business. Right away, he would have had identified with the family. He would have been able to do business as a family. I mean, you're thinking, but he just went and squandered out the money. And the, come back, I'm in. I love you. Let's get back to business. And that's grace. That's how the Lord does it. If you come back as a rebellious one to the Lord, you're a son or daughter. You can reach out your hands and pray in Jesus' name, and He can He can bless you and encourage you and trust you. Just come back. Y'all be repentant truly have to be repentant we don't do this as we don't use the grace of God in vain as Paul says okay and then put sandals and it's important that he put sandals on his feet what verse is this this is verse 22 I want you to go over that sandals on his feet because what is he doing he's taking these he's saying I want you to come back I want you to not look like you are, washes his feet, gets him back into the family. This inevitably his shoes would have been a little bit better than those that were around him. 
And a lot of times you say, well, you can tell a lot by someone by the shoes that are on their feet. And, and so what he's saying is I'm putting you back in the family. But also, Paul talks about preparing our feet to preach the gospel. We, we put on the, the shoes. We've got to go and preach the gospel. I believe this is also speaking of how then we can go back and rightly preach the gospel right away. Okay, that's a lot. I want to encourage you to go through that and understand. And then lastly, we just look at this in, uh, in this story. The older son came in and was mad. And I, I want to just hire, hi highlight one story or one part of this. And uh, let me just read it. Um, he says in verse 24, or 23, I'm sorry, the other thing in verse 23 is he gets a fatted calf and he celebrates. And so he has a big party. And so instead of saying, you know, a lot of times we do the whole shame thing. Oh, we don't want anyone to know what was really going on. Meanwhile, everybody knows what was going on. And then if you don't say anything, you know, there's no repentance. And then the next generation, if there's no repentance, there's no confession, there's no repentance, everybody's trying to hide everything, then generation after generation after generation keeps doing the same sins. You keep having the same problems in your family, and it just gets worse and worse and worse until someone rises up, gets rid of their pride, gets, and doesn't let shame control doesn't let guilt control. They confess their sins and they repent before God and then they allow the mercy and the grace of God. And this father understood the grace of God so he didn't do the shame deal. He threw a party. That's how the father is in heaven. He's not going to sit here and talk about your past. He wants to talk about you're a son or daughter in the future. That's all the Lord is for you. Don't let the shame dictate things. And here's what happens right away. People are going to come in and say, well, you, you know, they're going to com confront you. And that's what the older brother did. A lot of times in your life, people are going to, well, you just can't do this and you can't do that and you can't do this. And I'm telling you, run to the grace of God. Don't sin again. Get godly people around you to help you, okay? And what happens within this is that the older son came out in the fields, and they came and drew near the house, and he's heard the music, he heard the dancing, verse 26. He called one of the servants and asked him what this meant. Your brother has come home because he has received him safe and sound. Your father has killed a fattened calf. And he's like, he grew angry right away. And as you come back to the grace of God, as you draw people to the grace of God, people are going to get mad. They're just going to be flat out mad because they're thinking they got a whole bunch of issues and the Lord is actually using this whole scenario to confront the issues inside of them. And maybe you're the person who's just mad right there right now and the Lord's going to confront you in that. He's really kind, trust me. And he was angry, verse 28, and would not go in. Therefore, his father came out to him and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. He's making his case of why he, the father shouldn't be doing the party and the father should love him more. He's feeling rejected at this point. And I never transgressed your commandments. I've been serving you. And you never gave me a young goat that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours come who devoured your livelihood with harlots and killed the fat, you killed a fattened calf for him? And he said to him, Son, you are always with me. All that I have is yours. And this is what I, this is super important. You've got to know that the Father has all the provision right there. And, and, and it's important that we don't get angry and embittered in serving the Lord, but we go forth with joy and enjoy our time. And don't just serve. What would you have done in this? Would you have been the older son or older daughter sitting off in the distance mad? Or would you rejoice in the one who's come home? Or are you in competition with those in your church and you're trying to be better than them? Or do you rejoice when the Spirit blesses someone and encourages someone? Ultimately, this is about people coming home to the Lord. Okay, this is a little longer. We're just going to try to do this in 10 more minutes. So just stick, bear with me. Okay. Our Father is holy and He is good. Let's look at this right here. It's our Father. Around the throne, the angels... The throne of God, angels worship God with the names of respect and adoration. For example, to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever. Jesus made this startling de declaration that when you pray, pray our Father. This is so huge. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 9, 10, 11, I want to encourage you to go through the Our Father a hundred times. I try and pray the Our Father three times a day. And I'm not religiously, uh, not as the heathen does in vain repetition. Please just, just don't be religious on me. Right now, I pray this, connecting to God, weeping. I, I'm like Daniel. I point towards the east. He, he was towards Jerusalem. I point myself towards where Jerusalem is, like Daniel. And I'm saying, you're our Father. Holy is your name. Let your kingdom come. There's a whole bunch of, of and we'll get into that uh, in Firm Foundation uh, when we talk about uh, our Father in heaven. We're going to talk about the Lord's Prayer. So, it's important for you to know as we get into this that our Father, we stand today with a Father that is on the throne that cannot be moved. And He knew there would be Father issues. You would be wounding and pain. So, number one, He's a Father, but He's our Father. Therefore, you take on each other's burdens. We are all sharing the same Father. We all have our Father. We're all sons and daughters in the same family. Remember, pre- uh, foundation number one. God desires a family. Okay. Next, Jesus is revealing the Father. We're over here. We're talking about it, uh, who the Father is. The Father is holy. <laughs> and the Father is provision for holiness. Okay. As we look at the Father, we become holy. We become like Him. So Jesus reveals many facets of God's name and His personality. Yet God's fatherhood comes to the forefront and dominates Jesus' revelation of what God is like in John uh, 17, verse 26. Today, the Father is still inviting you to search out who He is and look at that. Let's just look at, if you can, just turn in your Bibles to John 17, uh, verse 26. And I want to just take time to read this to you. It says, I have declared to them your name, and I will declare it, that the love with which you love me Maybe in them, and I in them. And so, in essence, what it is is the Father, Jesus, is, Jesus prayed in John 17, 26, for you to know the Father. Oh, and, and I, will, I have declared it, and I will declare it. He's continually declaring, I pray every day, give me more of a revelation. Okay, next, sons and daughters. So, we did revelation of Jesus. We're on sons and daughters here. For eternity, you are blessed of the Father. Satan says you are cursed and, a, and accused by the Father. To inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's what you're called to do. You inherit it. The Father is thinking of you when he prepared the foundations of the world. Matthew 25, 31 through 34. Remember in verse 45, he's like, come, come to me. And, 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 and let's look at this real quick. Matthew 25, verse 45, 46. And, and it in essence, outlines everything about how he's going to come to judge the earth. In verse 45, he says, I say to you, in so much as you did it under one of the least of these, you did it unto me. It's, it's how we treat people, remember, uh, in uh, our, the grace message. We, we want to know, resist, and the third one is pursue. We pursue God, both God and people. That's, that's firm foundation uh, number 18. And so how we're treating people, verse 45 and verse 46, and then either you'll go to everlasting punishment or everlasting life. And so we want to understand that sons and daughters, God has made a way. He wants to be with us forever. He needs, he desires that. Today you can walk fully, you can fully walk in the affections and authority of a child of God, a new creation. Your earthly father may not may not have left you a financial or spiritual inheritance, but God has a rich treasure for you. This is who you are. This is your identity before the, when you say yes to the Lord. Okay, number three, the Father calls you to be holy. And we've gone through this a lot. 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through um, 2 Corinthians uh, 7, 1. And, and this is something that I really, really want you to go through. I mean, because, you know, if you, especially if you need to grow in a relationship with who the Father is. And so, in essence, within this, in 611, he talks about, oh, Corinthians, you what happened to you? You guys were doing well, uh, and then they're, 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 they're having problems, and, 
And he's like, don't you know, you, you can't come, your God's inside of you. Don't become, walk with idolatrous. Verse 17, come out from among them, that's repent, be separate from them, walk in holiness. Do not even touch what is unclean. And remember, we're back to our grace message. Let your instruments be used, your, your, your members as instruments of righteousness, not unrighteousness. He's like, do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be the Father to you. This is Luke 15. Look at this. If you come, if you repent, if you confess, if you repent, if you washed in mercy, you get. Remember, the Father didn't come out and get the Son when he was sinning. He waited until he repented before heaven and earth, and then he embraced him. He loved him both times. However, he openly displayed that love and then he displayed it by giving rewards in the same way the lord is saying to you if you're feeling a lack of the father heart and the affection of god if you don't feel like a son or daughter first of all you're if you're saying yes to jesus that's who you are but the father has called you to separate and so as i come nearer to the lord he automatically lavishes more and more love on me. He displays it, and I just love it. doesn't mean everything's perfect. It means if I see something, I don't run in shame. That's wrong inside of me. I don't run in shame. I run to God, and I have a repentant heart. Okay. <clears throat> we have these promises. Father calls us to be holy. Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness and flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. He taught the church in Corinth to know and understand the holy. Then you freely enjoy the loving Father and walk in His inheritance to you. Today is important for you to note that God loves you, but your sin keeps you from experiencing Him freely. His love for you wars against sin. Remember, if, if you don't feel the Lord, just run towards Him and say, God, in mercy and grace, wash me clean. Confess, repent, mercy, grace. Okay. He is the adopting of a Father. And we know this from Romans chapter 8. Go through Romans chapter 8, verse 12 through 17. Life is broken and unsettled until you know the embrace of the adopting father. Human intimacy will not answer the deepest cry. Remember the young man who said, who, who didn't know his father, uh, wasn't even cared for through child support? He, he, that's broken. However, your Father in Heaven will provide for you. But not only that, He will adopt you. You know, in, in adoption, when you get an adoption, you have to... You know, you, you go through the foster care, you go through however the process is, you have to get legal paperwork, and that comes a day when your child's name gets your name. And it's all about a name. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. We're under the name. Uh, Ephesians, Paul says, in Ephesians, he says, I, I, you are believers, un, uh, sons and daughters, children of God, under the name of everyone is named under heaven and earth. We're in the name of God. This is who I associate with. I don't associate with Muhammad. I don't associate with Buddha. I don't associate with Shintoism or humanism or secularism. We're under the name of Jesus Christ from Nazareth, our Father in heaven, the Lord, the Lord God. Okay. So, today our primary... Uh, Human intimacy, will, human intimacy will not answer the deepest cry of your spirit. You're created to long for the touch of a father. Today, your primary emotional need is in the assurance that you're enjoyed by the father in your very weakness, even in your brokenness, in your weakness. The Lord loves you. Remember, he, this is lavishing love upon that, on that repentant young man. Today, um, and I have a scripture in Hosea 14.3. Today, if you live holy as you allow the Father to be your Father and free yourself from your earthly parents and from past sin. And then here, we've got Luke 15. Um, the story is not just about the son, but about a father that is patient. The younger son asked for his inheritance, which was a great insult to the father. The father gave to his son the money because he knew the heart of the son. He knew that his son would never come into intimacy with him until he was broken by the discovery of sin and emptiness. Today, you live holy as you understand your sin and your need for the patient, saving Father. Okay, now, it's time to talk to God. It's time to take everything we just learned here, which is a whole lot, and it's time to talk to God. It's time to go after this. And what we did here is 
We've got the verse on top. We're going to read Isaiah 9, verse 1 through 7. That's all we're going to have you read. And then we're going to take time to pray, take time to encounter the Lord. We'll read this scripture. Ask the Holy Spirit, teach me, guide me. Say the verse slowly, asking for that big reveal. And when I did this, I just went, obviously I went to uh, Everlasting Father but and, I, and, and Counselor. And I just said, Lord, you're my Father, but you're also my Counselor. And, and you don't leave me as an orphan. You leave the Holy Spirit who searches your deep things, the deep things of your heart, to counsel me. And so I realized the Holy, the Father is counseling me when the Holy Spirit is speaking. A lot of you, maybe you say, my Father's never been there to counsel me. Well, let's connect to the Word and what the Spirit is saying. Does that make sense? So I went in dialogue and I said, you are my Father who counsels me. That became my truth. That became the anchor when I was praying. That became what I ministered back to the Lord, and it touched my heart. And then what does he think and feel about me? He loves me and wants to be with me every moment. That's why the counselor is there day and night. That's why the Holy Spirit is inside of me. That shocked me and blessed me. How then shall we pray for our neighbor? Okay, remember, you're going to meditate. You're going to pray up in and out with the, your group if you're in your group if you're by yourself just do that i want to pray for you right now lord we pray for a blessing as many uh, go through the father heart of god let them grow in knowing you more and more in jesus name